Okay, I'd like to um, look at this problem. It's a little bit of a modification of something that I uh, saw in a paper I reviewed. Um, so basically the idea is that we've got some fluid and it's, and it's in some sort of container. And I guess, you know, the fluid could come up to a reasonably high level. All we need to know is realize that this is a fluid, right? And inside this fluid, um, you know, we take some surfactants that will connect to um, ions, or or will maybe even ionize these um, these objects that we want to detect. So they could be pollutants. Um, the fluid could be a uh, could be blood. We might want to find. Some, something out about what's in the blood. And we, what we do is we have a detector here that can detect these charged particles as they come up through this little tiny hole um, if, if they come through the hole. And to get to the hole, come through the hole, we put on a nice um, mag electric field, excuse me, like I said, I'm modifying this from what I saw in the paper, and, you know, we'll have some sort of thing like this where we have a battery or something that, that more or less um, gives us an electric field here, which will pull these, um, that will pull these negatively charged ions up, right? Positive, negative goes up to the positive plate. So we, we want to have something like that, right? And um, basically the, the current through here is going to be proportional to the concentration of the nasties down here. So maybe that's what we want to find is the concentration, but really we want the current. And so we see the current and we, you know, we set our voltage and all that other stuff, and we want to know what the concentration is, right? So uh, that's what we'll do is we will um, say we're given uh, some charged capacitor plates. with some voltage put across them, voltage V, separation um, S, area A, so this is S and the square of this thing is A basically. So this is the square root of A, more or less. Um, a ions, and those ions have a uh, charge of Q and a um, mass of M, and we'll have them have a concentration of C, and um, They'll move through a constriction, this little constriction here. And let's say that's circular with a radius, um, I don't know, little a here. We can use that. Um, let's see, anything else we need to know? If they move through that constriction, they'll have to have a um, drag coefficient. B, and that way we'll, um, that way we'll be able to sort of equalize everything. Actually, we, we could equalize everything just with the electric field, but why make things easy, right? Um, and let's see, anything else we need? Not really. So, um, our concept here, 
will be the um I don't know the drift speed. So using the drift speed we'll be able to find the current and uh, that that should be sufficient right so recall that we had something going on like um, j is equal to n q v right so now we'll want to find what do we want to find we want to find the current going through this detector that we actually measure. So we'll call that I. So we'll get some I and we'll want to relate it to this concentration C. That That's our goal technologically. Okay. All right. So we need a strategy. Um, the first one will be to find uh, the find the velocity, find the speed. I think the speed is most important. And um, after we find the speed using um, this, then we will uh, and we will find the um, current density. And from the current density, then we'll find the current. And hopefully I have a little more room than what I just wrote. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you can live with that that amount there. Um so we'll do uh we'll find the uh, find the velocity. We'll just say that you know we've got our free body diagram. Uh, we know that we want the gravity, the gravitational um, interaction, the weight, right, which is coming down here to um, partially counteract the um, electric force and we'll want the um, drag force to help the weight, okay? Um, so the electric force is just Q times the electric field, right? And the electric field of this guy is basically V over um, S, so we have QV over S, and then we have, um, what's going on here? Then we have the drag velocity and the weight. The weight is mg plus the drag velocity, which is B uh, VD squared. Right. So we subtract that out and divide by B. And we have um, the drift speed is equal to QV minus MGS all over BS. Okay, because we divide by B and we distribute this S with the MG. Um, so, so that's how fast these Bs are going in the liquid. So, this is this is about as difficult as what, what was actually in the paper. There's a little bit, a little bit of a difference with cross-sectional areas. That all gets absorbed into this B. We don't really have to worry about that unless we're trying to optimize the size of the beads. Um, so then we find our current density. Uh, like I said, J is equal to NQS, where we really don't care about the direction. We know what the direction is, basically. Um, so N, in this case, is just the concentration, the number per unit volume, right, of these charge carriers, with, which have a charge Q. And um, I don't know why I said S. That's VD. And so we have CQ times QV minus MGS over BS times the square root of all that QV, blah, blah, blah. So everything's looking okay so far, right? We're, we're happy with that. Um, what we need is the current, which is just A times J. Uh, this area here, right? Uh, that area is the area of this constriction. 
So let's just say, okay, that's the area of this constriction. We'll call that um, pi a squared. We multiply that by c and q and all the good stuff, qv minus mgs divided by bs. And that then we're done. We're okay with that. All right. So if you think that's good, I think that's good, and we can all be good. Bye now.